one. Uh, this makes another of my vlog, this time um, of my visit to the National Museum of Singapore, which took place a few weeks ago. The subject matter of this vlog, vlog can be quite heavy, um, especially in relation to my last one. Uh, but I did mention that I want to, to have a mix of both because, I don't know, sometimes learning is fun. Anyway, there's a, there's a delay in putting this together because there were some important issues raised that warrant some kind of dignified treatment and looking into, at least in my view. But then again, I didn't want to make this too lecture heavy and dry um, because I think you all know where to go if you want such things and it isn't here. So this really is an, an attempt at balancing the two. At the very least, I hope it brings awareness and a development of love and understanding for our home, that is our planet, and everything in it. Our first level was closed off for renovations, so I headed to the second floor, where an exhibition was organised by a group known as Collective Argos in conjunction with Alliance Frances. I'll be looking about their work later on, uh, but in the meantime, I'd just like to point out that if you visit their website, they say in the description box, you will find lots of poignant images which in my view delivers potent and urgent messages about our planet. As you will see, I spent a significant amount of time at the story of the forest, which is an installation that turned some drawings commissioned sometime in 1803 to 1818 into 3D format. It begins on the second floor and spirals down uh, the floor below, ending at the Singapore Very Old Tree Exhibition that showcases images of some 17 trees and anecdotes to go with it. As with all things, uh, well, for me personally at least, I, I think, there are always many lessons to take from an experience. The principal lesson depend on, on the situational focus of my mind. This time I saw it as an increasing and overall worth of an accessible public object by imbuing it with sentimental value which may even expire or spur others to do the same. Uh, this is a very good thing because the more we love something, the more we want to protect it. I just thought the whole experience was fitting as a metaphor for looking at trees via images rather than going to see an actual one because the real thing is gone forever. As dreary as imagining a reality without any trees and creatures that depend on them. The same goes for many other wonderful things about our planet. Collective Argos is a group of journalists who have dedicated their work to taking photo evidence of the damaging effects of climate change and all other forces throughout the world manifesting in ecological, economic, political, cultural terms and so on. The main themes were problems occurring on and in our oceans, specifically overfishing, uh, including illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, or IUU for short, and other destructive activities, including using transshipment services to escape liabilities, which will cost uh, developing countries their food sources, jobs and revenue in the form of tax, trading, processing of catch, etc. The results can be a huge and wide cascade of devastation. For example, the inability to make ends meet leads to a refugee crisis in Senegal, endangering lives without the guarantee of an ability to lead a dignified life. Uh, bottom line is the pictures show more than a simply the deleterious effects on the environment, but also how it can affect people and indirectly many others. Another panel that stands out to me uh, was one that heralds a cycle of destruction which begins and ends with it and humans to hurry the cycle along. In this case, the effects of an increase in tourism in the Mediterranean results in the Posidonia beds being under threat by ever increasing presence of pleasure boats in service for tourists. These seagrass beds are highly productive marine ecosystems but also have, have important protective effects upon the coast. They function to stabilise soft bottoms and alleviate effects of strong waves and currents and thereby reducing coastal erosion. The end of seabeds along with the marine life was spelled the end of be beautiful beaches, clear waters and the end of tourism. Other issues brought to light were the tremendous amounts of plastic waste pollution, 
in the oceans, deep sea mining resulting in sediment plumes and or chemical pollution in Indonesia, and rising temperatures linked to coral bleaching. But add to that list further evidence of modern slavery. The Sea Shepherd, a conservation society, captured images of about 100,000 floating dead fish on the Atlantic Ocean, released by one of the largest trawler in the world. Proper protocol dictates that the ship return to declare catchers, but in a bid to save money and time, opted to engage in this incredibly wasteful practice. The catch includes blue whiting, a species of fish normally used to make oil, fish meal and surimi, also known as imitation crab meat. To put things into a perspective, United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization in 2020 reported that one third of all fish stocks are overfished, almost two thirds cannot sustain any increases in fishing, biodiversity is on a decline, and one third of marine mammals, sharks and other related species threatened with extinction, which is happening partly because of indifference towards bycatch in their fishing methods. Very clearly, we need more effective science-based measures to ensure sustainability, including exploiting and sharing technology, scientific knowledge, scientific data, and other resources to study fish populations and fishing activities of each vessel, whilst allowing reviews or studies by independent bodies and or NGOs to ensure efficient strategies. Also, as explained earlier, it's important to increase surveillance, especially of long-line fishing and transshipment activities, including labour standards. There must be improved compliance and cooperation among states, an easier path for parties to take action against them. Lastly, identification that food is sustainably and legally sourced, as well as education on the importance of these things, could deal with the problem at its roots. Yeah. Um, the oceans, like the land, have their very own constitution, so to speak, in the form of United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS for short, which established, amongst other things, uh, the Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ. Within it, coastal states have jurisdiction to the exclusion of others to regulate natural resources, which includes exploring, exploiting, environmental protection, and marine scientific uh, research. Clearly, this is important where conservation programs are concerned, especially in light of their obligations stipulated in Article 192, which is to protect and preserve the marine environment. I don't think it is correct to adopt uh, a narrow view in thinking that the Convention was not designed to deal with newer challenges like climate change, transshipment services or other issues because they were not present as the Convention was being drawn up. For example, some scholars argue that because some provisions do not expressively mention fishing and or related supporting activities such as bunkering for refueling, transporting catches, or any other activity that allows fishing to continue for longer periods of time, the ability to rely upon specific convention provisions to regulate these activities is put into question. UNCLOS is a living instrument supplemented through principles and building substance upon their skeleton form with each new challenge. It is a system designed to be normative by providing guidance on how to regulate and resolve disputes and promoting cooperation and coordination. So every issue should not be viewed in a vacuum. For example, its provisions relating to illegal fishing should be read to facilitate the whole regime. Its aims and ensure its proper functioning whilst taking into account state's Article 192 obligation that I mentioned just now. Arguably, they ought to do so with scientific knowledge and other changing circumstances in mind, which is reflected in part by increasing references to them, especially in disputes concerning border delimitation. It goes without saying that in response to these new challenges, dynamic and responsive conduct are important in meeting them. Tribunals do reflect this idea to a certain extent. For example, reading list, list as indicative instead of exhaustive, or reading the obligation of due diligence as regards flag states, directing them to take appropriate measures to ensure that vessels flying their flag are not engaged in illegal fishing activities in the EEZ of other states, despite there being no direct provision. It must be pointed out that due diligence obligation is an obligation of conduct, not of result, meaning it is not about achieving compliance but deploying 
adequate means or exercising best possible effort in ensuring it. Uh, before one is to lament such things, I think this strikes a delicate balance of achieving consistency, efficiency and progress against the difficulty of monitoring or worst risk undermining the whole, the entire regime by simply ignoring onerous obligations since the convention functions upon consent and agreement by states. Is it within the spirit of UNCLOSE to be balancing competing interests, positions, issues, etc. in order not to undermine it? After all, it's a matter that depends on the ability of states to control activities that occur far away from their own territory and the means and technology available to them. So what we need now is also clarification of the extent to which obligations cover matters impacting climate change, which hopefully will be forthcoming. Uh, right, I think I've uh, covered quite a lot about this topic, so I think I'll be signing off now. Uh, see you in the next one, which I hope will be of a lighter note. Uh, I actually booked a budget hotel uh, quite close to the city centre so that I can run to Marina Bay at dawn. So hopefully that will be a much fun uh, video. Yeah, till then, so take care and uh, lots of love.